following political debate between Senator John F. Kennedy and Senator Hubert H. Humphrey is being presented by WCHS-TV, the Charleston Gazette, and the participating stations as a public service. Now, here is the moderator for the debate, WCHS-TV News Director, Bill Ames. Good evening. The West Virginia primary election campaign has already been characterized by the unique and the unusual and that tradition is being followed in spectacular and unusual fashion tonight with a face-to-face -face debate between Senator Hubert H. Humphrey of Minnesota and Senator John F. Kennedy of Massachusetts. For weeks, the attention of the nation has been focused on the voters of West Virginia and on the efforts of these two men to enlist their support in the presidential preference balloting next Tuesday. In that voting, only registered Democrats can cast their ballots for these presidential candidates, and the outcome of the voting is not binding on the Democratic delegates to the July convention in Los Angeles. Still, it is generally agreed that the results of next week's election in West Virginia will be important to the presidential ambitions of the winner and of the loser. With a desire to crystallize for the voter the issues in the West Virginia presidential race, the Charleston Gazette WCHS-TV and participating stations in and out of the state have brought Senators Humphrey and Kennedy together for this encounter. Formal debate will begin the program. A question and answer period will follow the debate. The questions which will be asked have been sent in to the Charleston Gazette by its readers. The questions will be put to the Senators by the two men on either side of me, Ned Chilton, assistant to the publisher of the Charleston Gazette, and by Dale Schussler of the News Department of WTRF-TV in Wheeling. Gentlemen, in the debate, you will each have an opportunity for an opening five-minute statement. Then you will have five minutes for rebuttal. In the toss of a coin before broadcast time tonight, you won Senator Kennedy and then chose to go second in debate. The order to be followed in opening statements and rebuttal, therefore, is the opening Senator Humphrey, then an opening by Senator Kennedy, rebuttal by Senator Humphrey, and rebuttal by Senator Kennedy. Now the sound of this buzzer will indicate that your time is at an end, and I ask your cooperation in observing the limitations placed upon you. And so, Senator Humphrey, may we begin with your opening five-minute statement. Thank you, Mr. Ames and fellow Americans. Now, every political campaign should make a truly constructive contribution to American democracy. We should learn and become informed. And I have learned that here in West Virginia that you want a government which never rests in this all-important and vital effort to build a secure and an enduring peace. I have learned that you want a government that cares and acts for the people and understands the needs of the people. And you want a government that isn't blinded by budget balancing slogans, but rather is deeply dedicated to a balanced nation in which the pockets of depression and unemployment and poverty are erased. Now the problems of this wonderful and beautiful West Virginia are much the same as those of other states and indeed of the world itself. And mind you, these problems are growing and spreading like a cancer throughout our very land. There's one thing to me that's crystal clear. America needs a democratic victory. And I pledge my wholehearted and active support to any forward-looking Democrat who may win the nomination. And I mean that to my friend John Kennedy as well. Richard Nixon must not be the next president of the United States. We've had too many years of caretaker government that ignores problems and avoids opportunities. Too many years of shameful neglect of America's needs at home and waste and loss of America's prestige abroad. We have, in fact, friends, been the victims of a no-go, go-slow, not-now veto administration. Popularity has been substituted for leadership and mediocrity for principle. Slogans have been offered in place of programs and public relations instead of genuine public service. America. Yes, West Virginia deserves a much better deal. Now we have one basic problem. A conservative Republican government in Washington that is content with standing still in a changing America and a very rapidly changing world. And talk 
talk has been substituted for deeds. Little or nothing has been done about distressed industries such as coal or depressed areas or the problems of technological unemployment and automation. Or indeed, little or nothing about the growing demands and needs of education or the care of our elderly. The Republican administration has put on the brakes on the American economy when we should be moving ahead with giant strides. It has complained about growing surpluses of food and fiber while in many parts of America, yes, in West Virginia, children suffer from inadequate diet. It shouts of inflation as it adds to the cost of living by hiking up the interest rates and tightening up the credit. And we pay a terrible price for this indifference. Now, these problems in West Virginia and the other states of our union are in fact, however, not the worst that America faces. Time has caught up with America.